the very beginning, right here. This is just for demonstration purposes. Five halves should work out and I should get a remainder of zero. So negative two comes down. I multiply this times this. Five halves times negative two. The twos cancel, I get five times negative one, that's negative five. I add down, I get negative two. What's five halves times negative two? Negative five again, right? Add down, what do you get? 12. Okay, what's 5 halves times 12 or 12 over 1? So 6. You get 30. Ah, remainder of nothing, right? And then what's left here, okay, let's see what would be left. We'd have an x minus 5 halves. We would have a negative 2x squared minus 2x plus 12. And then you'd be left to factor this, right? So you pull, let's pull a greatest common factor out of this. What number can come out of both? Negative two? Pull a negative two out. And then this factor is to be what? Minus two plus three, which is this. Right, this and this are here. What about this? Do we have this? Yes. Distribute the negative 2 back through. This one. Here, here, and you get back this. So, I mean, all I'm trying to show you is that it works, right? It works even if you were to bring a fraction in, it would still work. The math gets a little bit weird, but y'all doing okay? Yeah. We have five minutes. Yes? Is a negative 2 equal to 0 or no? No. Um, if you were to set this equal to 0, right, this would never give you an answer. Right? It would never equal zero. But this would give you five halves, but so would that. So you don't, these are the same, yeah. they give you the same zero. It's kind of amazing that it does that. But Okay, I want to show you now a problem. Hold on a second. Let me, uh, well, I'll do you something simple. Uh, no, no, that's two. I know that that looks, that looks kind of ridiculous, like we're being asked to factor this. Let me just first confirm with you that you agree that this would factor to be this. Do you agree with that? Well. Okay, if this were x squared minus 4, would everyone here say x plus 2, x minus 2? And where is this 2 coming from? It's just the square root of 4, right? Well, this is the same exact thing, except instead of 4 here, I have a 2. So shouldn't this number in here just be the square root of whatever that number is? Yes? So multiply here to here, what do you get? Multiply here to here, negative root 2x. What do you get here, though? positive root 2x, they go away. What's root 2 times negative root 2? Negative 2. So that does work, yes? yes. Okay, I'm going to show you that synthetic division, though, would not get us to here. Let's try our synthetic division on this piece right here. What's my list? 1 and 2, that's it? Those are the only numbers that will give you this? The leading coefficients, 1. So you come up with your list. Now, be careful here. What goes in the synthetic division box? One, one zero, zero, negative two. And you can try one, negative one, two, and negative two. None of them will work. This won't work. If I try negative one, that won't work. And then you trust me that the others won't work? OK. Now the question is, why doesn't it work? Because if you set these both equal to 0, you get, what, negative root 2? And here you get positive root 2. These are irrational numbers. And the test is called the rational 0 test. It only works for rational zeros. 
So there are limits to what it's capable of. But it is pretty convenient, right? I mean, when, it, when your zeros are rational. And I always have students, they'll ask me, they're like, well, is there a shorter way? You know, is there a shorter way than the, synthetic, or the rational zero test? And I always tell them, that is the short way. You know, I mean, like, what are your other options? Factor that. You don't have any other options. Like, would you rather have 24 possible synthetic divisions to do or just not have any idea how to do it? Wolfram Alpha. <clears throat> Wolfram Alpha, yes. So let's see. Um, what are we going to do for homework tonight? What? Oh, you, you want homework. I know you do. You act like you don't want to do homework. Number E. Sorry, I'm going to keep you here just an extra minute here. I just want to look up the homework. <clears throat> well, first off, let's everyone do E as a take home quiz to be turned in at the beginning of class next time. I want you to sketch E. I want you to do E as a function and sketch it. For what? What was the last homework that you were that you did was out of R four? Okay, so I didn't give anything from from long division section or synthetic. Do y'all feel okay with it? Okay. I tell you what, then. Okay, I'm just going to do that as a take home quiz. But if you have any sort of like, feel like you have any gaps with any of this, I would just go and run back through those problems again. Do them on your own just to make sure you're, you're comfortable with it. And next class what we're going to do is we're going to start graphing a new type of function called rational functions. All right? Question? E for a take home quiz. That's all I'm giving you.